Number 26. Two point charges Q1 and Q2 are 3 meters apart, and their total charge is 20 microcoulombs. If the force of repulsion between them is 0 0.075 newtons, what are the magnitudes of the two charges? All right. We got two charges, Q1 and Q2. We don't know their exact values, right? I mean, that's what we're asked to solve for. Uh, but we know that they're separated by three meters. And we also know that the total charge between them is going to be 20 microcoulombs. We also know, so actually, well, first let's handle that. So we know that the total charge between them, in other words, Q1 plus Q2, will equal 20 microcoulombs. Now I'm going to convert this into just coulombs, right? So that's going to be 20 times 10 to the minus 6th. So uh, we know this formula, we know this to be true, right? That's just coming right from the problem, okay? And we know that the they are repulsive forces. So that means that this is either positive and that's positive, or we have negative and negative. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just know that they're going to be the same. So now what can I do? Well, they also told me one other piece of information. They told us that the force between them is going to be 0 0.075 newtons, right? So we know that the force between Q1 and Q2 will equal 0 0.075 newtons. So what I realize is that why don't we expand on this force equation, right? We know the force between two charges is equal to, so we know the force of between two charges will be equal to the electrostatic constant K multiplied by the absolute value of the uh, multiplied product between Q1 and Q2, all then divided by, let me make that a little neater, all divided by then the radius or the distance between them squared. So the force, I know what it is, right? They told us that's going to be 0 0.075, right? The K value we also know, so that's going to be 8.0. 9, 9 times 10 to the 9th, multiplied by Q1, we don't know what that is, times Q2, we don't know what that is, all divided by the distance between them, which was 3 meters squared. Now, take a step back. We got this equation, and we have this equation. How many equations do you have? You have two. How many unknowns do you have? You have two. What do you do? It's a simple now system of equations. Anytime you have two unknowns, but you know two equations, it's a simple substitution, all right? So in other words, what I'm gonna do here, let's just move this force on out. I'll just move it up to there for now. Why don't we solve this equation for Q1? Uh, you could have solved it for Q2, it really does not matter. The reason why I'm gonna do that is for, the, for this particular reason. If I solve this now for Q1, I can then take the result here of Q1, meaning this, and plug it in for Q1 in my formula, okay? I mean, you could have also solved this for Q1 and then plugged it in there. It really it does not matter, okay? Now what I realize then, if I do that, right, let's write it out, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, multiplied then by the absolute value of Q1, so that's now 20 times 10 to the minus 6th, uh, minus then Q2, right? All then divided by, excuse me, all then multiplied by Q2. Divided now by uh, 3 squared. We know what 3 squared is, so let's just convert that into 9. Now what do you have? One equation, one unknown. Go about and solve it now, okay? That's all it is. It's now math. No more physics. So do your cross multiplication here. Move the 9 on out. So why don't we just multiply that? So 0 0.075 times 9. So we get 0. 675 and that's then going to be equal to you can basically just get rid of the absolute value here it's not gonna not really gonna do anything don't worry about it you'd have a plus and minus anyway so uh here we have now this is going to be uh, 8.99 times 10 to the ninth then multiplied now by why don't we you know distribute the q2 here to each term so it's going to be uh, 20 times 10 to the minus sixth q2 minus then q2 squared all right, now you can do another distribution between those, right? So we can distribute that now. So, and uh, where am I going to put all this, right? We're running out of much space, so let me put the result over here. So this is going to be 0 0.675 uh, will be equal to, let's multiply the 8 point, oops, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th multiplied by then 20 times 10 to the minus 6th. And we get a value of about 1.7. 
1.798 times 10 raised to the 4, 5. Okay, Q2. Minus then the 8 point. Actually, wait, why did I? That was, that was silly. Let me, I'm making more work for myself. Let's do this. Let's divide out, sorry. Divide out the 8.99 times 10 to the 9th from both sides, okay? Let's do it that way. So we're going to take 0.675 uh, divided by then 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. So this will be now on the left-hand side. It's now going to be 7.51-ish. 7.51 times 10 to the minus 11. And that will equal then the 20 times 10 to the minus 6 Q2 minus Q2 squared. So bring all these terms on over to the left-hand side, or you could have brought this on over to the right. It really does not matter. But we're going to have a nice little quadratic, okay? So let me just resize this stuff a little bit, just to give myself a little more space. All right. One second. How you guys doing today? Hope you're having a great day. All right. Always a great day doing physics, right? Who's with me? Hoorah. Okay. I'm not really sure what that was, but... Uh, this is going to be 20 times 10 to the minus 6. Sorry, I have to entertain myself somehow. And this is then going to be, we're going to bring this on over to the right-hand side. So there's going to be 7.51 times 10 to the minus 11th. And that's going to be equal to 0. So now we have, you know, the coefficient here is a 1. So we have our A, we have our B, and we have our C. All right. I'm going to try to make a video on how to program your calculator to do the quadratic equation. In other words, you know, uh, so check the description below. If there's a link there, I did it. If there's no link there, well, obviously I didn't do it, um, but I'll, I will try. Um, so here we're going to now just plug in. I'm going to use the program. Otherwise, you'd have to use the equation, right? Negative B is equal to plus or minus uh, square root uh, of uh, B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Instead of what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug it in. So the A value is going to be 1. The B value is going to be negative 20 times 10 to the negative sixth. And the C value is going to be negative 7.51 times 10 to the negative 11th. All right, so basically get two values here, so let's write them both down. So Q2 will equal negative 3.23 times 10 to the minus sixth. Or Q2 could have equaled 2.32, right? 2.32 times 10 to the minus fifth. And both of these are in terms of coulombs. Now, we generally reject the negative answer, but in here, right, we had an absolute value, so on and so forth. So the magnitudes are what's important. Now, you might say, well, how can Q2 be both things? Well, we don't know which one Q2 is, right? It's either going to be 2.32 times 10 to the fifth coulombs, or it's going to be the positive value, uh, the absolute value of this, right? 3.23 times 10 to the sixth. Now, it doesn't matter which one you choose, all right? It can be one of them. So we know one of the charges, let's just say hypothetically, will be 2.32 times then 10 to the minus fifth. And then the other value you actually got is the equal to the value, the magnitude of the Q1. So that's actually going to be 3.23 times 10 to the minus sixth. And these are both in terms of coulombs. If you got to convert into microcoulombs, just divide it out by 10 to the, uh, 10 to the uh, uh, minus sixth, okay? So uh, basically... Those are the two answers. Now you can go and just double check yourself. Why don't you take these two and then plug it back into this formula here and see if the force comes out to be 0.075. So we're going to take 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, multiply then by 3.23 times 10 to the 6th, negative 6 times uh, 2.32 times 10 to the negative 5th, and divide that now by 9. And what do you get? 0 0.0748 which is very, very close because I rounded 0 0.075. So hopefully that kind of proves to you that uh, the numbers work here. So these two would be the answer, okay, for both charges. We don't know which one is which, but that doesn't really uh, matter. We know those are the magnitudes, all right? Now, let's take a look at letter B. So now, if one charge attracts the other with a force of 0.525 uh, newtons, what are the magnitudes of the two charges now? Note, you might have to solve a quadratic. Well, yes, we do. So uh, basically, the only difference is, notice, this is the absolute value. So nothing really here is going to change, okay? The only thing that's going to change now is the force value. I'm going to do everything exactly the same way, all right? So let me erase now, or let me just, not erase, but let me plug this in now in terms of uh, 0.525. That would have been that value. 
Okay, so this would have been 0 0.525. Now I know my handwriting is getting very sloppy here. This is 0 0.525 instead. This will now change. I multiplied the 9 on over. So why don't we take 0 0.525, multiply that by 9. So this now works out to be 4.725, right? And then what you wanted to do was we divided the 8.99, right? So 4.725 divided by 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. And this now, instead of the 7.51 up here, it now becomes 5.26, roughly. 5.26 times 10 to the minus 10th. And then we had to bring that on over to this side. So instead of that value over there, it's going to be negative, right? Because we have to subtract it. Uh, 5.26 times 10 to the minus 10th. And now that's your new C value. So plug it on into the quadratic equation again. So we got program... We're going to have 1 for A, negative 20, times 10 to the minus 6th for B. For C, it's going to be negative 5.26 times 10 to the minus 10th. And what do we get? So here we get two values again, right? So now uh, we're going to take Q2, okay? Uh, it can be either 3.5 times 10 to the minus, sorry, times 10 to the minus 5th, or it could have been a negative 1.5 times 10 to the minus fifth. Now here's the thing, okay? If we go about and we now plug these values in, let's just say, right? Because it's really the magnitude now. You might say, well, does it follow the same pattern? Why don't we plug it back in and see? All right, why don't we plug those two charges in? So 8.99 times 10 to the ninth multiplied then by 3.5 times 10 to the minus fifth times 1.5 times 10 to the minus fifth. It's the absolute value, so I didn't forget the negative. But then divide it now by uh, r squared, which is nine. Do we get the right answer? Yeah, we do, right? So guess what? There they are, okay? So these, again, we don't know which one Q2 is, and you know either it's gonna be the positive here, and the other charge will be the negative, or the Q2 will be the negative, and then the Q1 will be the positive. We're not sure. But let's just plug it in. So let's just choose that this is 3.5 times 10 to the fifth minus fifth. And that's in coulombs again. And then the other guy will be the negative one. Negative 1. 1.5 times 10 to the minus fifth. So it all does work out nicely. Okay. So those would be the two charges. So, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Hopefully this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Hit that like button. All right. And uh, we'll see you on the next problem. Take care.